happy Halloween, y'all. So beautifully didn't actually make it yet, but I have confidence that she will. So I decided to start without her. Good morning, Mr. Hideous. Are you upset that I'm not a bunny? Because I can change this. Um, good morning, cool frog. I see you over in Jimmy's drawing stream. I was going to snipe that. Let's do that. She did make, oh, hell yeah. And, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> One second. That was a little premature, my bad. Oh, my God. She's so cute. Sorry, Chad. It's very early in the morning. Oh, no. Nope. Anyway, I'm here now. I got to turn <laughs> off my light and stuff. Cause... I mean, do you want to? Do you want me to yeah. give you? You didn't see none of that. Can't even believe how cute she looks. I didn't get a chance to tell her yet because she's kind of late. Obviously, late and beautiful. Oh, I can see her daughter. I don't think I ever see her in real life. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be entertaining y'all. Um, why? Okay, she's back. Are you ready? Oh my god. Hey girl. Oh my god, you're so cute. I thought you were sleeping. No, I've been getting ready. Sleep. I was like, if she's if she's sleeping, you look adorable. Thank Did you. I thought my daughter was helping me with my makeup today. So she did well good. done. She did good. Yeah, she really did. Bait my son said I look like a crackhead. Your son said you look like a crackhead? Yeah. Hold on, I gotta make Beetle this juice better. also looks like a crackhead, so <laughs> I know we're crazy. Yay, I'm so excited for this. Happy Halloween. Did you dress up last year? Um last year, no. The year before I was Michonne from Walking Dead. I don't know who that is. Oh, the black woman with the dreads and the big katana sword in Walking Dead. Yeah, I didn't really watch The Walking Dead. Okay, but well, anyway, I was her. It was bad. Nice. Because I've got her sword, so you know, I've got the biggest accessory necessary already. A real sword? Yeah. Yeah. You want you're going to be very casual about that. <laughs> Do you want me to get it for you? So you can yes, see please. Because when I get up, you can see my ass. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to get subscribers. <laughs> I lost three subscribers after the um, Mothers Who Murder stream. I don't know. Maybe we made really bad jokes. <laughs> so I'm trying to get them back. So if you could show your ass, I'd appreciate I it. Fuck them people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but also come back, y'all. Um, there she is. I don't mind this at all. Ooh. It needs to be sharpened, but yeah. Nice. Scary. No, that's not the right way. <sighs> You're so cute. Um, Jimmy is drawing right now. I wish I could get my screen to, sh it says I'm sharing it, but I don't forget. It. It's I'm having a boomer moment. Uh, this. That's not it. Sorry. This. This. Okay. This. Yeah, Jimmy's over here drawing. We'll just mute him and watch. Okay, so when he drew this, um, this guy, Frankenstein. Frankenstein he put the knots in his head and cool frog's like, why are those things in his head and not in his in his neck? And I was like, wait, yeah. I always thought they were in his head. No, the bolts are in, don't go in his neck, I think. I didn't I didn't know that. No, but welcome. He said he loves the outfits. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So we really aren't gonna watch Jimmy today. Today we're here to watch um this case. Did you watch any of the stuff I sent you? So we're watching the case of Michael Jackson versus Justin Timberlake. Let's go. <laughs> it does kind of look like that, huh? Yeah. The thumbnail. Because the guy that was murdered was a Michael Jackson impersonator. And mm -hmm. the Marine looks like Curly Justin. So yeah. Well, that gives me a conundrum because I don't really care for Justin and I like Michael. So 
I know, but this time right. Justin's right. Sorry. <laughs> okay, well, now we know how you feel about this one. So if you don't know, y'all, there was May 1st. Actually, let me just let this person tell you. There's a Marine. His name is Daniel Penny. He's going to tell you the story about what happened that morning. And then we're going to watch the video. It's not that long. It's like a minute. And then we're going to talk about it. You ready? I don't, I didn't even know Justin was Canadian. I should have fucking known. Morning, Froggy. Not Daniel well, Penny. Imitating, imitation, uh, Americans, famous. Why? Stop that shit. Okay. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, whatever she said. She the boss. Okay, right. let's listen. Justin, all the others. It's like, come on, I thought you guys were American. You lied to me. You thought Justin was American too? Yes. Yeah, I think he is. Noah's I'm just trying to claim playing. him because he has a crush. I'm playing. Oh, no, he was trying to claim some. It's clap chasing. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell is Daniel Perry? Okay, let's do Daniel Penny first. That's this man. Let's listen. So well, I live sad. in the East Village in Manhattan, so I take the subway multiple times a day. In this instance, I was coming from school. I got out of class around 2.15. And I took the J Street, I was at J Street Metro Tech, I took the Uptown F train. Can you hear this? Um, at Second Avenue, um, a man came on, stumbled on, he was appeared to be on drugs. Um, the doors closed and he ripped his jacket off and, violent, and threw it at the people sitting down to my left. I was listening to music at the time um, and he was yelling. So I took my headphones out to hear what he was yelling. And the three main threats that he repeated over and over was, I'm gonna kill you. I'm prepared to go to jail for life and I'm willing to die. You know, this is a, this was a scary situation. And, uh, Mr. Nearly came on. He was, he was threatening. He's, he's a, I'm six, two, and he was taller than me. So it was, and there's a common misconception that Marines don't get scared. We're actually taught, uh, one of our core values is courage and courage is not the absence of fear, but how you handle fear. And, you know, Semper, I was scared for him. myself, but I looked around, I saw women and children. He was yelling in their faces saying, saying these threats. I couldn't just sit still. Some people say that I was holding on to Mr. Neely for 15 minutes. This is not true. I mean, between stops is only a couple minutes. So the whole interaction less, less and less than five minutes. Some people say I was trying to choke him to death, which is also not true. I was trying to restrain him. Uh, you can see in the video, there's a clear Wait, rise and fall. His, his nose is pierced. Indicating that he's breathing. I'm trying to restrain That's him from him being able to carry out the threats. And then some people say that this is about race, which is absolutely he's ridiculous. Losing points, I didn't yeah. see a black man <laughs> threatening passengers. I saw a man threatening passengers. A lot of whom were people of color. A man who helped restrain Mr. Neely was, was a person of color. And a few days after the incident, I, I read in the papers that uh, a woman of color came out and called me a hero. What I don't believe that I'm I'm a hero, but uh, she was one of those people that I was trying to protect. We were all scared. Mr. Neely was yelling in these passengers' faces, and they looked terrified. Um, the reason why there was no video at the start of the altercation was because people were too afraid getting away from him. And... The, the, it didn't, the videos didn't start until they saw that situation was under control. I knew Maybe. I had to act. And I acted in a way that would protect the other passengers, protect myself, and protect Mr. Neely. I used this hole to restrain him. And I did this by leaving my hand on top of his head to control his body. You can see in the video, there's a clear rise and fall of his chest, indicating that he was still breathing. And I'm calibrating my grip based <laughs> on, on the force that he's exerting. And he's um, a machine. I just, I, I mean, I was trying to keep him on the ground as, until the police came. I was praying that the police would come and take this situation under, uh, take this situation over. I didn't want to be put in that situation, but I couldn't just sit still and let, let him carry out these threats. Only $5. And Pretty sure that's it. Now there were some cuts in that video. I don't know where, if there's a full, a longer interview somewhere, if that's just what they came out with. I mean, apart from his nose piercing, I completely agree with everything that happened. And 
I don't see Thank that there's a problem. The only problem is the justice system, especially in New York, because they will let go anybody who, if he'd been attacked by a lefty, he would be seeking justice still, and the person that attacked him will shut him, would be on their merry way. I'm bringing up the video of him in the subway. Now, he said the reason there's no video is because they were so afraid that they weren't videoing yet. Or it could be that it was a non-issue because a lot of shit happens on the subway. And until this happened, it, it didn't become an issue. But uh, this video is what I could find from the news. It is not the whole thing. If you, if you guys know Juan Alberto Vasquez, he has the whole thing. I, this is only 30 seconds. I cut out um, anything that was repetitive. So it's not fun mm -hmm. to see. In the in the um, indictment that we're going to look at, it says that the police arrive and he's still breathing, and that after a minute or so they start administering CPR because he had stopped breathing, and that he died at the hospital. Now I don't know if that's true. I mean, they're not in court yet, so I don't think he dies in this video. Is what I'm trying to say, but it's still he could. There's a possibility. So if that's something you don't want to see. I'm sorry, what? So he choked him out. He's going to choke hold him, yeah. But he, he says he's breathing the whole time. Yeah. He says his, he's got breathe. a steady rise and fall of his chest the whole time. Once the emergency services get there, if he's still alive and he's still breathing, he's alive at the hospital. My man wasn't guilty. Yeah, but that's also what I heard from him. So, I, I mean, he's going to make the story favorable to himself. Let's check it out. There's no sound. So he's got his arms. Um, these are just other passengers trying to make it make it stop the struggle part. I can't see. That's the thing when it comes to struggling and restraining. I have a disconnect. So this is like how it ends. You see, he's still breathing here. I assume we don't see when the cops get here. So who knows how it ends? I wish I could see that. But this is obviously how it begins because they're still like full struggle. My internet shit today, everyone. I apologize. Um, <laughs> he could have let go so, ages ago. You say it again? He could have let go before the guy was, even when the guy was trying to fix his arms to restrain. My man's eyes are closed there. It doesn't even look like he's trying to shout, let him go. Yeah, at a certain point, you're like, what was... His adrenaline had taken over by that point, so he rationality was not in the equation. Yeah. What does chat think? Johnny Penny's not the next Rittenhouse, he's the next Derek Chauvin. <laughs> okay. Well, half the people say he's a hero for doing what he did, and half the people say he's a murderer. So I feel like that was... Is I, I don't know if anyone thought Chauvin was a hero. I well, know, but he was also a nuisance, well-known nuisance. They said the guy that got choked out. Um, other people were happy that he'd been stopped for once. Um, um, now he said, okay, Dorothy D said he, um, MMA people also have a referee to stop this. It doesn't look like the ref jumped in to call this fight. He's going to, he's going to argue that I know passed all the way out but i'm just saying i can't see the struggle while you're having to hold on for dear life at this point yeah well i mean let's see how long is it between Let, let's go i'm sorry i'm all over the place i'm gonna go to this this is their <laughs> they want to dismiss basically Everything now that he's been indicted by a grand jury. So first they charged him. They charged him before they um they brought it to a jury, and then the grand jury did indict him. And then he was arrested, and they said that he was arrested. It was like prearranged, so they already had a bail package. I'm like a fucking bail package. Damn, what is that? I guess he has a shit. I mean, I don't know if he has a shitload of money. Let me show you this before we get into the documents. This is his um, give, send, go. It's at $2.9 million. Yeah, I think he's got enough money. 
He's probably all right. Two days ago, three days ago, five days ago. Yeah, people are still donating. Twenty-four year old from him protecting individuals on a New York subway train from an assailant who later died. Like it's not your job, I don't think, Mr. Marine. I know, but at what point, even with all the training you've got as a civilian, do you not intercede? Do you not help? Well, out? It, he hasn't right. done anything. He's saying loud words and he's making big gestures. I'm sure that's not unfamiliar on a subway. I've never been on one, so I'm just assuming. But is he, do you, is, I don't know. He, they have laws against Good Samaritan Project in New York City. Grant, okay. Noah said, it's stupid, but a lot of these charges are laid just to calm down the public outcry prevent riots his body would go limp if he passed out and it takes another five minutes without oxygen for the brain supposedly but i've been hearing from people who have been out for more than 10 minutes and are perfectly fine now so just say yeah david blaine didn't he hold his breath or go underwater or some shit i'm on about real people i'm on about real people, not people that real. Like i saw it on the television box with the space above fucking london or wherever it was no that's real, real average everyday people that aren't trying to get a career in a celebrity status okay. i don't feel like they <laughs> average if they survive without oxygen for 10 minutes that's a zombie they were average before the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> okay i feel you um grand jury sees black victims versus white people white people equals guilty what the fuck do you know about the criminal system the criminal justice system. I don't think they see white people it and think guilty. Like, before he's come today, it's been over three days. Please, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Who saw? So he should have to kill or hurt an innocent person before someone stops him? Exactly. Prevention. Mm -hmm. There isn't any um, kudos in society now for being proactive. But why don't you, like, okay, I guess we don't know how it started. He could have been like, dude, it's cool, chill out, everything's fine. Hey, what's going on? Are you having a bad day? Maybe he tried all of that yeah. first because that's what you do first. You don't choke cold, but I don't know. Obviously, we don't see the beginning. No, because remember he said in the other video that he had his headphones on and he could see some commotion going on. He had to take his headphones off to clearly hear what was going on. Could hear that there was an issue because the guy wasn't calming down and intervened to restrain him so that everybody else felt safe and i don't know oh, you know what it feels like they missed i think he missed a step or something in there there was something that doesn't quite sit right as much as what he did was okay something is missing and the length of time people need to understand that oh you know what lock him the fuck up yeah <laughs> lock him just lock him the fuck up yeah just lock him up right i mean not like, the thing is he's gonna argue that first of all he knows how to perform a chokehold they are not necessary they're not known to be deadly that's not the necessary necessary outcome of a chokehold like you would expect in a gunshot you know what i mean that it is not considered it is considered non-lethal that the way that he was holding his head meant that he was trying to make sure something, I don't know what that excuse was, and that he died. The The coroner says he dies of a chokehold. And he's like, you, what is that? You can't, well, dying of a chokehold? Didn't he die of, shouldn't he have died of asphyxiation? Asphyxiation, lack of oxygen, anything like that, maybe damage to his trachea, anything. So he's trying to say, like, he was dead when i was there i didn't kill him he wasn't dead i just did a chokehold he was alive when he got to the hospital he up within five minutes and it was over and he got that to the hospital alive so, yeah. you know it seems also like he got to the hospital alive based on what this guy's lawyers are saying right uh, yeah and this what did this guy himself is it yeah okay so i mean unless we just solved it but they're trying to, this is the dismissal, dismiss the indictment by the court. I don't know what that means. Dismiss the indictment as the government failed to prove causation. Dismiss, mm -hmm. failed to prove the requisite mental state needed to sustain, substantiate the crimes. 
uh, suppressing statements made by Mr. Penny and allowing Mr. Penny an opportunity after any hearings in this matter to and prior to the court's decision on the issues addressing those hearings to submit memorandum of law for the court's consideration. Uh, con controverting the subsequently obtained search warrants as lacking in probable cause, uh, suppressing evidence obtained from the unlawful search of Mr. Penny's cell phone and iCloud account, and granting defendant leave to submit subsequent motions. Now, this is interesting because it almost seems like the state wants to look at, actually, it's not almost seems, it does, let's look. I, mm -hmm. I don't know why this isn't highlighted, but the state wants to look at his phone like a month prior to this. And they're like, what? Well, well, they're looking they're, for premeditation or maybe hatred yeah. um, against homeless people across, or black people. Or has he come across his character before and he's messaged somebody and... Something I've, like that. That's a bit much. I'm sorry. That's that does feel like a, a, a bit much. But what and they keep bringing up that he was homeless and i'm like how i don't think anyone could know that he was homeless just by him entering the subway and acting a fool that's he was a known character in the area he was a known michael jackson oh, friend. that's why that picture of him with the curl in his hair is there he's mm -hmm. a known person in and among those situations Your arms gas out. You can't hold the strength that long. Even UFC fighters can't hold a choke for longer than one minute. Yeah, he's a Marine. Ex-Marine. He's still a, Ex -Marine. a college student. I'm saying that he's still trained as a trained Marine. Yeah. There's a Was... of... Plus, like, if you feel like this is that dangerous of a situation, I think you I could probably... Like for a minute. Come on. <laughs> she can choke you out for a... oh, way over a minute and... I think it you should is, do that for the science. It is good. What was the dead guy's drug test results? Because Floyd was three times the lethal limit. Um, are you insinuating that this young man is on drugs? He can't even get a house. How are we going to get drugs? This stream needs Andrew Bronco. Yeah, maybe they've do. got those vending machines where they had free shit and paraphernalia in them, so I'm sure there's somebody somewhere that's hooking them up. Do you think he's on drugs as well because he's acting out? Potentially. Yeah. Or it's just mental health that's gone unchecked because he's homeless. Mm -hmm. Um. There, I, we can look at the New York self-defense laws if you want. Fact check. What is this? Component: The concept of self-defense is widely accepted legal doctrine and then acknowledges New York Castle doctrine. Duty to re this isn't not a standard ground, but the state does a lot for some other castle. That's something about your house, right? Okay. Yeah. Justification. Use of physical force generally, and then defense of a person as well. The use of physical force upon another person, which would otherwise constitute an offense, is justifiable and not criminal under any of the following circumstances. One, a parent or guardian or other entrusted person with the care and supervision of a person under the age of 21 or an incompetent person and a teacher or other person entrusted with the care and supervision of a person under the age of 21 for, the, for a special purpose may use physical force. Okay, we're not there. To a warden or other authorized official of a jail, no prison or correctional suit. Okay, it's not that. The person responsible for the maintenance of order in a common carrier of passengers or a person acting under his direction, these physical force, nope. A person acting under a reasonable belief that another person is about to commit suicide yeah. or to inflict serious physical injury upon himself may use physical force upon such person to the extent that he's reasonable belief is necessary to thwart such result. Mm -hmm. That one, I mean, he said, I'm want, I'm willing to die. Could that, could he have taken, I mean, he did say he's protecting passengers though. Let's keep going. A duly licensed physician or person acting under a physician's direction, no. Person may, pursuant to the ensuing provisions of this article, use physical force upon another person in self-defense or defense of a third person or in defense of premises or in order to prevent larceny of or criminal mischief to property or in order to effect an arrest or prevent an escape from custody. Whenever a person is authorized by any such provision to use deadly physical force in any given circumstance, 
nothing contained in any other such provision may be deemed to negate or qualify such authorization. So the use of deadly force is not, um, it's not an option, basically. Whenever a person is authorized by such provision to use deadly physical force in any given circumstance, nothing contained in any other provision may be deemed to negate or qualify the authorization. So only if it doesn't fit into that, nothing else outside of these parameters will qualify them for using the deadly force. Um, does it sound like he was a, okay. Does it sound like yeah. using deadly force, a chokehold is not deadly force. He might have died from it. Yeah, it's not deadly force until the person dies. Because somebody could use deadly force and the person walk away from it. Hmm. I wonder if I'm probably wrong about that. Let's see. What was a penal um, use of physical force in defense of a person? For that section. Premise person during a burglary. Let's look at this. Um, you said, a, a person may, subject to the provisions of subdivision two, use physical force upon another person when and to the extent he or she reasonably believes such to be necessary to defend himself, herself, or a third person from what he or she believes to be the use of imminent use or imminent use, so not yet happened, of unlawful physical force by such other persons unless unless so so far he's allowed to do what he's doing unless the latter's conduct was provoked by the actor with intent to cause physical injury no the actor was the initial aggressor no the physical force involved is the product of a combat by agreement no oh these are the things that they're going to need to look at that's probably why they're going to search his stuff um the physical um a person may not use deadly physical force upon another person under circumstances specified in one in subdivision one unless okay so there's a the actor reasonably believes that such other person is using or about to use deadly physical force even in such case however the actor may not use deadly physical force if he or she knows that with complete personal safety to oneself and others he or she may avoid the necessity of so doing by retreating except that the actor is under no duty to retreat if he or she is in their dwelling. A police officer reasonably believes that such person is committing or attempting to commit a kidnapping, rape, sexual That's problem, or robbery. Or C, he or she reasonably believes that such person is committing or attempting to commit a burglary and the circumstances are such that use of deadly physical force is authorized for a burglary? Fuck in New York. I mean, that's probably what it's like in a lot of places. Oh, no, well, no, I yes. feel like that must be why they needed the search warrants to search deeper to make to see if he like any of these, you know, because they unless is here. Mm -hmm. Unless you can search his shit and find any of these, he's not going to get in trouble for this, I don't think. I don't what do think you... he's going to get in trouble because he doesn't fall under any of those criteria. Um, Nova said people get shot daily and don't die. But still, if you shoot somebody, that's considered deadly force. With the reasonable likelihood that they will die. You don't shoot somebody thinking that they won't. I know, but choking someone is, is, is as unpredictable as punching someone. You don't know yeah. how you're going to punch. Yeah. I wonder... Let's ask, oh, let's ask the AI if chokehold is deadly force. <laughs> is a chokehold deadly oh it's two words of course huh? oh. a chokehold can indeed be considered a deadly force technique a chokehold is a grappling hold that restricts airflow to the lungs or blood flow to the brain potentially leading to loss of consciousness, brain damage, or even death. Because of the potential for severely severe injury or fatality, its use is often restricted or prohibited, prohibited in many law enforcement agencies and martial arts competitions. Its potential lethality makes it a controversial technique, and its application by law enforcement officers has been a topic of intense debate, especially in cases where it has resulted in fatalities. Different jurisdictions may have varying legal definitions and interpretations 
of the use of chokeholds, so it is essential to conduct consult the specific laws and regulations. Okay, I didn't know that. That's interesting. I thought, see, he freaking biased me on this chokehold shit because all I read was his dismissal, and I'm like, oh yeah, chokeholds is fine. Oh no! Now I read this, I'm like, oh no, chokeholds is bad. Chokeholds is, <laughs> is bad. But. As I said, once you don't know what strength or what level of force you're going to end up using to cause injury or maybe death. Yeah, I wonder if what. So he's and breathing, right? But that doesn't mean the adequate amount of oxygen is getting to his brain, right? I know, but they got there. He he left the scene. He went to another place. Then he died. I, I learned know. that from his dismissal, though. That could be bullshit. He could have been so dead. He could find the police report or whatever the medical. Yeah. That, hold on. I wonder if it says a time. Let's go back to this. Um, Chat, if you're out there apart from Nova, can you comment, please? Because he's doing a lot of talking right now. We need to hear from other people. Just saying. Dead ass. Um... We need to hear from other people. <laughs> okay. Um, so these are the lawyers. We're the founding partners. We blah, blah, blah. On June 14th, the grand jury returned a true bill charging the defendant. Sorry, I just have to say something to Nova. You know how many children could potentially die from choking? Choking is a potential hazard for death. Okay? It's, it's a known fact globally. So I don't know what you mean. You don't die. They don't choking in Canada, dude. I swear I'm coming to choke you out, Nova. <laughs> I love that you're doing it in Beetlejuice. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Uh, I think that's why I'm able to do it because I swear I'm coming to kick your ass. <laughs> Uh, oh, fuck you. I tried talking and explaining the reality of this. The shitty host decided to ignore everything I said. I wonder why. I heard you say you could... Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I could break your neck with a choke and like... Yeah, talking to Tanova is not going to help me at all with this. It's considered less lethal, not non-lethal. Oh. Yeah, but if you're going to be a dick, I'm just going to ignore you. So there's that part. Resubscribe. I can't hear you. Resubscribe. Okay, back to this. Oops. Factual background. How about that? On Monday, May 1st, this is when it happened, shortly before 2 p.m., the defendant, Daniel Penny, had boarded the Queensbound F train at the J Street Metro Tech Station after finishing classes at Brooklyn Tech. He was headed to the Brooklyn Lafayette stop where he planned to swim at his local gym before returning home to his apartment. Mr. Penny's train departed from 2nd Avenue stop for Broadway Lafayette at precisely 2.23. Grand jury minutes. We're not going to read these, but they're referencing all the stuff that that's where they got this information from. As the car doors were closing, an irate Jordan Neely entered the subway car and immediately made his presence felt. Multiple eyewitnesses recounted Mr. Neely forcefully throwing his jacket either across the train or to the ground. I'm going to check out and come back in a second. My internet's been stupid. Okay. Um, to the ground. While complaining about his lack of food, money, and homelessness. Oh, I guess they would know he's homelessness. Or homeless. Uh, Mr. Neely's behavior quickly escalated. Witnesses describe him taking on a fighting stance while shouting threats such as, someone's going to die today, that he would kill anyone. He would take a bullet and that he was ready to go to Rikers, ready to do life, and the subway car fell silent and passengers began scattering. The grand jury witnesses told of their fear upon observing Mr. Neely's conduct. Person number 16 described Neely's words as insanely threatening, delivered with an affect that witnesses characterized as sickening and satanic. Person 16 believed he was, quote, or, quote, was going to die, end quote, as Neely began approaching him. He described the moment as absurdly traumatizing. No, absurdly. Absolutely traumatizing. <laughs> beyond anything he had ever experienced in six years riding the subway. Person number 18 was taking her son to his therapy appointment. As she recounted Neely saying, I want to hurt people. I want to go to Rikers. I want to go to prison. And her unnerved son asked her, Mommy, why does he want to go to prison? 
Mother and son took cover behind her son's stroller, shielding themselves from Neely, who was now making half lunge movements and coming within half a foot of people. Person number nine, a student commuting from high school, recalled the moment she heard Neely say, someone is going to die today. But or she put her hand on her classmate's chest and began praying them doors would open so she could leave. Whereas person number four, a retiree who rode the subway daily during her 30 year career described her actions, her reactions to Neely's words and demeanor as follows quote, I have been riding the subway for many years. I have encountered many things, but nothing that put fear into me like that. End quote. Several of the grand jury witnesses described the moment Mr. Penny sprung into action. Several of the same grand jury witnesses. Okay. The witnesses said, quote, I remember like looking to my right, seeing the mom cover her kid and then looking left. And in like the snap of finger, I saw Mr. Penny come up behind him, put his hand on Mr. Neely. And then they were both down on the ground. Person. Yeah. Like how come no talking happened? Person number 16 recounted Mr. Penny grabbing Mr. Neely across his chest and bringing him down from behind. It was, she perceived a very safe manner. <laughs> mm hmm. He safely, you know, threw him on the ground. With Mr. Penny taking most of the fall, he described a sense of relief in the train that the threat was neutralized once Mr. Penny acted, but noted how Mr. Neely continued to forcibly resist while on the ground. Person number two thought the movements on the ground really just looked like a struggle. It didn't look like Daniel Penny really had control of the situation. They were both very much fighting back and forth. Several witnesses confirmed that they did not see Mr. Penny appear to squeeze Jordan Neely's neck Persia, and never heard Mr. Neely gasping, gagging, or saying that he could not breathe. Many of these same witnesses recounted Mr. Penny asking for someone to call the police as he wrestled Mr. Neely on the ground. Officer or police officers responded to a radio run, a, responding to a radio run, arrived on scene and observed Mr. Neely lying on the floor. After several minutes, the officers began to administer CPR because supposedly he was breathing when they got there. And he they arrived until EMS arrived him. It says after several minutes, the officers began to administer CPR. So I guess he stopped breathing later mm -hmm. until uh, until EMS got there ten minutes later, and he was transported to Lenox Hill Hospital, where he where he later died. See, yeah. and they said that to the grand jury, so this is not a surprise. Okay, Mr. Penny was cooperative with the officers on scene, accompanying them to the fifth precinct detectives to the 5th Precinct Detective Squad, where he was interviewed substantially about the incident. MTA records confirm the train arrived at Broadway Lafayette at 2.23, 30 seconds after it departed 2nd Avenue? What? 30 seconds? How fast are these trains? 30 seconds? Is that real? I guess. Because it said that it left promptly at 2.23. This one's saying it arrived 30 seconds later. Okay. The first police radio run was at 2.26. The first officer arriving on scene at 2.23. So that means the most, the longest he could have been interacting with him is 10 minutes total for the entire thing. Not even within three minutes of them getting on the train, he's they said call 911 and then oh. Tejada testified that Neely had a pulse when he arrived on scene, and thus resuscitation efforts only began minutes later when a pulse was no longer detected. Well, there you go. Tejada's partner, Officer Dennis King, also testified to feeling a pulse when checked Mr. Neely. If he didn't kill him with this thing, I don't understand. I don't understand what this is about. Is it I, because uh, a black man has died, a white man is 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 involved, and the white man must get the blame? I hate the way things are going right now. It pisses me off. Hmm. Following the, the interview, the people's skin needs to stop. Well, you're wearing white face. You got a lot of room to talk. Yeah, I do. <laughs> On the morning of May 12th, Mr. Penny, accompanied by Thomas Kniff, maybe that's his um, attorney, surrendered voluntary at the 5th Precinct. That afternoon, Mr. Penny appeared with Mr. Kniff before the criminal court, where he was charged by, 
who was charged by felony complaint with manslaughter in the second degree and released on a $100,000 insurance company bond. Imagine having enough time to, like, get your shit together and make a claim on your fucking charges. <laughs> your insurance is like, we got this. I didn't even know insurance did this type of shit until Amber Heard. Because don't forget, um, you had the companies that Amber Heard was dealing with from the Johnny Depp case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do do, um, yeah. they do do court insurance and shit. It's mad. Yeah, I had no idea. Choking and being choked are two different things. Choking and being choked are two different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know Dismissal of indictment to the court. Mr. Penny requests that the government produce the grand jury minutes and the court inspect said minutes. Okay, so they're just asking. They are saying basically we're not sure, but could you look over all this shit and make sure everything's fine? This is boring. This is the boring part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They they list C L M N. Yeah. They list everything that it could could might be. Let me make sure I didn't skip any. What do you mean? Um, as far as like shit that they can't, all of the procedural stuff that could that could be appealable, that could be like um procedurally wrong they basically list it was the grand jury correctly informed of the corroborating rule c blah, 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 blah. was the grand jury properly instructed to complete the defense the alibi just was the did the prosecutor inject personal opinions or beliefs did the, they're they, they just listed all of it all right i think because i don't know why because l m n o p q is a lot okay six in addition do the indictment fail to conform to the requirements of more of the same crap? B, dismissing the indictment as the government failed to prove causation. To dismiss an indictment based on insufficient evidence before a grand jury, a reviewing court must consider whether the evidence viewed in light most favorable to the government is, unex if unexplained and uncontradicted, would warrant conviction by a pettit jury. Thus, in the context of grand jury proceedings, legal sufficiency means prim, prima, prima, facia, I don't yeah, know, I don't, yeah. proof of the crimes charged, not proof beyond a reasonable doubt. In applying that standard, a reviewing court must determine whether the facts, if proven, and the inferences that logically flow from those facts support proof of each element of the charged crimes. To be held criminal respon criminally responsible for a homicide, a defendant's conduct must actually contribute to the victim's death. Don't you feel like it did contribute to his death? I don't think he was just going to always stop breathing in 10 minutes after the chokehold. Mm. By setting in motion the events that resulted in the killing. Again, I when I first read this, I'm like, why are they saying this? Yeah, yeah. Liability will attach even if the defendant's conduct is not the sole cause of death. If the oh. actions were... Yeah. I hate if the... You need to stay away from me because if I end up getting locked up because of your stupidity and I was in the area, so I happen to get... Yeah, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to bring you back to life so I can kill you again. Try me. <laughs> yeah, I'll figure out how to haunt somebody. Um, if the actions were significantly direct cause of the ensuing death... Um, however, more than an obscure or merely probable connection between the connection and result is required. In this case, the evidence before the grand jury was not legally sufficient to establish the offense charged or any lesser included offense. The government's medical examiner, Cynthia Harris, articulated in her opinion that the cause of death was what the cause of death was yet failed to substantiate the basis of her opinion. When asked by the grand jury what caused the death of Mr. Neely, medical examiner Harris stated, quote, compression of neck and on the death certificate, it reads compression of neck and in parentheses chokehold, end quote. She also testified in performing an autopsy on Mr. Neely, she observed bleeding to his neck muscles, which indicated trauma involving a significant amount of force applied to his neck. She mm -hmm. opined that these injuries were consistent with the chokehold. However, she failed to indicate that the injuries were consistent with asphyxiation. Bum, bum, bum. While medical examiner Harris discussed asphyxiation generally, her testimony was void of any conclusion or explanation as to how the injuries sustained to Mr. Neely's neck proved he died from asphyxiation. Furthermore, 
medical examiner Harris failed to indicate what in Mr. Neely's neck was compressed, which ultimately, in her opinion, led to his death. She failed to offer an opinion as to whether the chokehold applied pressure on the car carotid, artery. carotid artery or to the windpipe. Instead, she opined generally as to the significance of interfering with either one. This amounts to conjecture. Uh, Joe in chat said, anything involving the head can be lethal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. According to medical examiner Harris, determining the amount of time necessary to render someone unconscious would normally depend on whether someone would interfere with the blood flow to the brain. Oh, blood flow has nothing to do with the oxygen. So who well, cares if it's rising and flying, falling, right? No, because the oxygen is carried in the blood, oxygenated blood. Yeah, but they're saying he's... Br okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not... This is not medical advice. It's not, but uh, I'm just trying to figure it out. <laughs> or legal advice or any of the advice. Um, according to... Um, wait. Flow, blood flow to the brain, which could render someone unconscious within a matter of seconds. See? Mm -hmm. Didn't even take minutes. If you interfere with the airflow... That can render someone unconscious on the order of minutes. Okay, so they are different. Let me read this again. According to medical examiner Harris, determining the amount of time necessary to render someone unconscious would normally depend on whether someone would either interfere with the blood flow to the brain, which would render them unconscious in seconds, or interfere with the airflow, which would render them unconscious in minutes. Okay. Without guidance on this point, the grand jury was left with no way to judge the significance of the length of the hold. Should the time be measured in seconds? in the case of carotid, carotid, carotid artery, or minutes in the case of the windpipe. Interesting. This is an interesting, like... So where did they find this ME that's doing half a job? Hmm? I mean... Yeah. What if that's, like, the standard in New York and she's just doing what she's supposed to do? Ugh, New York's a scary place. Get out. Mm-hmm. It is worth noting medical examiner Harris failed to testify how long it would take to kill someone when either the airway or the carotid arteries are being compressed. She testified only as to the amount of time it would take to render someone unconscious. When asked whether it is possible to render someone unconscious without killing them, she answered, yeah. In addition, the grand jury was left without guidance as to when Mr. Neely died, so the grand jury would know how close in time the hold was to the death. When asked if she could say when Mr. Neely died, medical examiner simply said, no, I can't do that. Uh, Harris opined on when she observed Mr. Neely's purpose, purposeful movements end. However, she testified, opined on when she observed them end. However, she testified as to her own uncertainty on this point, stating, but again, I don't have the benefit of electronic monitoring of the brain and, you know, an EKG monitoring his heart and everything. So in other words, he could have been alive without moving. She's they didn't hook him up to a heart monitor? It's sounding very unprofessional and very callous in her comments. Yeah. Hey, Dr. Dib, got to work, but I'll be looking. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, likewise, when asked if Mr. Neely would have survived if Mr. Penny released him the moment she saw purposeful movement stop, medical examiner Harris indicated, no, I can't say that. I don't know. Therefore, her testimony on when Mr. Neely died left the grand jury with a reliable opinion uh, as to whether the death occurred during the hold or sometime thereafter. Without a reliable opinion. I'm like, that don't make no sense. Without a reliable opinion as to did the death occur during or after. It should be noted that while medical examiner Harris stated her opinion as to the cause of death, she was never asked whether there were any other possible causes of death. Mr. Neely was not pronounced dead until 3.39 p.m., an hour after the CPR referenced in the video timeline was administered. But I think, like, certain people can't pronounce. So it might have been, like, this. that's an hour later. That's an hour after the, in, the, initial, the initial incident. That was an hour after they said he stopped breathing at the scene. So, you know, this might be one of those cases where it's like no one really cares and it goes away eventually. But because we're going to encounter people who believe that he guilty, the, diff, the um, you know, the media facts, at least we'll know the actual facts are yeah. based on let, let some Mr. type Penny of sworn document anyway. 
in this case, there was a possibility of prejudice to him by the prosecutor's failure to ask the question, ask him the question at issue. Dismissal of indictments based on defective grand jury proceedings should be limited to the, okay, that's just procedural shit. In addition to the importance of determining the time of death, the length of the hold, and what was being compressed, all discussed supra, medical examiner Harris testified to the importance of consistency of the pressure applied in a chokehold. My stomach. <laughs> she noted that failing to apply consistent pressure acts like a reset or a starting over, like coming up from, from water when one is swimming. Okay, but what if you're drowning? If you get a little bit of air, that's not enough. No. Like if you go back under, you know what I mean? My, it's not. A... Yeah. Even in an asthma attack, restricted airflow can be a problem and you are literally struggling for air. It feels like somebody's squeezing your lungs and you can't get air properly. Yeah, so that might be the equivalent of what this feels like. So even though he's trying, even though he's trying and his chest is doing the thing, he might not be yeah. getting any air. And then knows why. during that attack, well, for me, my ribs, my rib cage starts to hurt and it's even harder to get the, the breath in. <sighs> so, yeah. Uh, she went on to explain, so if you were to put someone in a chokehold where you obstruct the vessels that takes the blood to and from the head, that person will be rendered unconscious within a matter of seconds. If you then immediately release that hold and blood flow returns, then that person will wake up instant, usually within a matter of seconds. What is worthy of note is that Harris made clear that Penny did not apply consistent pressure. It obstructed the vessels, rendering the airway. She testified, quote, I suspect, although I do not know, that there is some air that's getting in at some times, end quote. Her admis admission that there was a lack of consistent pressure and as a con consequence of failure to find a sustained deprivation of oxygen determines, undermines the notion that Mr. Penny caused the death of Mr. Neely. I mean, really, you're arguing that you didn't cause his death. <laughs> Maybe not on purpose, but like what you did, I think, caused his death. If you hadn't that day put your hands on that man he would potentially still be alive yep yep yeah Good. i mean but based on the other laws or the self-defense laws it feels like i don't know this is maybe because he has that 1.9 milli they're like we, we have some we got some tricks we 52 yeah, pages we got you if he didn't have that nose ring i'm sure it wouldn't be it wouldn't have got here Oh ring. my god, that nose ring is fucking awful. If I would have seen that before, we wouldn't have done this show. We would have been talking about somebody else now, people. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be talking about Danielle Perry from Texas or wherever. In this case, medical examiner Harris failed to offer any evidence or opinion that the victim died from asphyxiation due to the chokehold. She merely testified that asphyxiation could happen by a chokehold and that she believed that Mr. Neely died from a chokehold. The fact that she did not testify that he did, in fact, die from asphyxiation can only be explained by a lack of evidence to support such a conclusion. Okay. I mean, we don't. What else is this? The government failed to prove the requisite mental state. Here's an, here's another one. With respect to manslaughter in the second degree, the government was required to present competent evidence before grand jury establishing that Mr. Penny recklessly caused the death of Jordan Neely. And if it lacks recklessly, the defendant acts recklessly in this context, if he if the defendant is aware of or consciously disregards a substantial and unjustifiable risk that death will result. The risk this, see, this is when they're going to talk about the chokehold. The risk must be of much of such nature and degree that disagreeing, disregarding that risk constitutes a gross deviation from the standard of conduct that a reasonable person would observe in the situation. An act qualifies as sufficiently direct cause when the ultimate harm should have been reasonably foreseen. With respect to the count of criminal negligent homicide, the government must demonstrate that Mr. Penny acted with criminal negligence. Defendant, tell us how they do criminal negligence. Both recklessness as the mental state required for second degree manslaughter and criminal negligence as the mental state required for criminal, criminally negligent homicide requires that there be a substantial and unjustifiable risk that death or injury will occur, that the defendant engaged in some blameworthy conduct contributing to that risk, 
and that the defendant's conduct amounts to a gross deviation from how a reasonable per person would act. The only distinction between the two mental states of recklessness as required for conviction of second-degree manslaughter and criminal negligence for negligent homicide, the recklessness requires the defendant be aware of any conscious and consciously disregard the risk while criminal negligence is met when the defendant negligently fails to perceive the risk, which is what he did because clearly they, based on just asking the internet, there's a risk. And if you want to ask chat, Darth Hideous knew about the risk. Yeah. So I feel like that's interesting little. It is what eyewitness testimony says that the man was actually begging to kill somebody that day. And yeah. I don't know. The self-defense law kick will probably kick in. Yeah. And defense of others. Mm-hmm. Um, Harris, medical examiner Harris, in her testimony conceded not every chokehold should chokehold should be lethal, according to the government's expert witness, Sergeant Caballer. The hold Mr. Penny was trained to use was a non-lethal tool utilized to subdue an aggressor by rendering him unconscious or to gain control of a situation using less than lethal force. Sergeant Caballer Caballer in his testimony noted that a hold can be fatal when it is applied to the full context, yet he is clear in his analysis of the hold that Mr. Penny used that he did not apply it to the full context. In other words, Mr. Penny did not apply it with yeah. intended lethality because his intention was consistent with its with his training to gain control of the situation in a non-lethal manner. Furthermore, Sergeant testified that if one's intention in applying the hold was to increase lethality by placing pressure on the arteries, one would push the head forward. He went on to clarify that Mr. Penny did not push Mr. Neely's head forward. Instead, Mr. Penny had his hand on top of Mr. Neely's head so that he wouldn't be able to apply more pressure. So he's holding himself back, supposedly. With so the, he's like doing that type of thing. To so, guys. yeah. Um, okay. He also... He also testified in if one's intent was to increase lethality, he would apply pressure to the carotid artery through a precise placement of the arm and elbow. He went on to testify that the positioning of Mr. Penny's arm did not allow him to apply a lot of pressure to those carotid arteries. He went on to testify that Mr. Penny's placed pressure less on the neck and more on the upper part of the jaw. Likewise, the placement of Mr. Penny's elbow was not centered on Mr. Neely's chest. As such, mm -hmm. he wouldn't be able to apply a lot of pressure to the carotid arteries. He went on to testify, all things considered, of where his hand placement is and arm placement, it looks as though he's just holding him. <laughs> well, there's not a choke hold. Let me look again. Uh, so, um, kind of look like he's and Penny took him out in the most basic way I can tell you that's what happened hmm. yeah the elbow is nowhere near he's not holding the neck he's holding around this area of the head if that you know when you hold a baby to, to burp them and you hold mm -hmm. their in the, and support yeah. that yeah that's the kind of well that's oh, what it looks like but... yeah what brought this situation on um apparently just the guy got on the subway angry and started acting a fool acting a fool yeah Lunging at people is what this is alleging and saying he wants to die, he wants to hurt someone, he wants to go to Rikers, he's over it, he's hungry. He says he's hungry, he's homeless, and something else to start. Oh, so he wanted to go to Rikers so he could get a shower, food, somewhere to put his head, and he wanted to kill somebody to get there. If he hadn't tried to be saying, oh, somebody's going to die today, I don't necessarily think that he would have had to use such force, Yeah, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that guy doesn't necessarily hear all of that. He says he's listening to his headphones, sees yeah. all the scared people. But then, yeah, exactly. He's he's not just focused on the guy; he's focused on the people around him as well, and how they're reacting to the situation. If everybody else had been chill, I think he would have been chill too. But as a marine with training, he, he stepped in to 
um, karma situation guy, not necessarily kill the guy. Yeah, I think that's everybody right. else's safety. But that's my rationality. So I don't know. Yeah, this will be interesting. I wonder if it'll even go to. I mean, they're kind of. I don't think that they are. They're not writing or anything about this. They're just definitely like making a stink about it, but mm -hmm. because it's white versus black, because there's millions of dollars involved, because the guy that like all of that, that's why it, it's, it's become of, political rather than even criminal. There's always a political element these days. Yeah, it's weird because when that cop, that one lady, um, what was her name? The cop that shot, she thought, Taser, Taser, Taser. What was her name? Oh, her. Yeah, I remember that one. Um, When she was on the stand, she was like, basically, or even before that, she was very suicidal. She was very like, I can't believe I did that. Like, I killed someone. It almost felt like she was like, whatever, do, like, punish me because I deserve it. You know, because even though she didn't mean to, even though, you know, all yeah. of that, yeah. she, this That's this guy is like, yeah. I didn't yeah. even know. Oh, he died after it must have been something that happened in the cop car because he was fine when I last saw him. Well, that's the difference though. She taser, 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 shoot, shoot. She knows that that was a direct correlation, causation situation to do with her actions. I, Where, I mean, really? You don't think you this mean? guy knows? You don't think this I, guy knows his chokehold? Yeah, the chokehold, but when a person that you just supposedly choked out who left your presence alive and an hour left after your the, presence uh, under CPR because he had stopped breathing to be fair. He was alive though. He wasn't he was pronounced dead. for a minute, but yeah. He was declared he, dead. It's also he wasn't even at the scene, if that makes sense. It's like as the person, as as the perpetrator, it makes it harder for you to connect your responsibility because there isn't that direct connection. But it's like when my sister hit an old woman by accident with her car. Did she my get the dead? Was at, no, she didn't. And that was what was keeping my sister awake because she was like, if this woman dies, it's going to be mm -hmm. a fault. So, yeah, I do understand that, yeah, his actions did cause his death eventually and ultimately. But I like to argue on the way. <laughs> we, we, like, we think he's guilty and innocent. So there's that. Yeah. His Which is like basically circumstances make him innocent, if that makes sense. He didn't just attack the guy, put him in a chokehold, and he died. He was but protecting the thing is, or defending is it his people. job? Is it his job to do it? No, then that's what I was saying about society and people not intervening and maybe um This is why. My brain just went Maybe this is why, though. Maybe people don't want to intervene because, like, you'll be the one going to jail if it goes sideways. I know. Then you end up with that whole thing of if somebody does get end up getting hurt and you could have done something about it, you have that guilty thing of maybe if I had, maybe I should have. That whole woulda, shoulda, woulda, coulda situation arises. No, there's nothing you can do about it now after the fact. But you still have that niggling in the back of your mind. Maybe if I had just... It would have saved a child's life, another person's life. Do you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. oh, what the flock said. It took how many years for the information out there? George Floyd wasn't suffocated. He died from heat failure, heart failure. Oh, that's what that says. I could read. I just was seeing if you could read. Yeah, I could read too. Girl. Wait, he did die of heart failure because of the extra yeah. fentanyl. Yeah, the um, reports actually just come out and everyone's been talking about it. I didn't know that. that. Um, Chauvin, Chauvin and everybody else is innocent. They didn't do anything. It's, as I said, politicization. Could it, his heart fail because he was... Because of oh, drugs? Or be yeah. Yeah. Okay, because don't... When it comes to person with um, known drug use, you have to look at the long-term effects of what that's going to do to the body, how much it's going to weaken the body, um, having drugs in your system. Your body isn't capable of functioning at a normal level now because it's been compromised so much. This is two years ago, though, so I guess they've already known this. No, but I suppose what they've come out, that suggested few... No, 
stuff's come out in the last two weeks. Let's see. I know I can do like search and tell it to in their way to like. Hmm. What's this? How long ago was this? April 2021. All these are from not due to cardiac event. Not due to cardiac event. That's why I said look for, look up two weeks ago because that's 2020. I can't two weeks ago. Nothing. I, what should I Google? Because I just George wrote George Floyd heart failure. George. New. <laughs> I think they'll tag it new. George Floyd autopsy 2023. George Floyd. Thank you. Try that on YouTube. George Floyd is not new. Does not say. Everyone lied. Tucker Carlson reveals. Someone's here. Oh, my son hasn't seen me. You know what's really fun? Uh, this morning, the gas people had to come. Come in, buddy. <laughs> The gas people came to my door right before. Hold on. No, stay here. I'm like, just stay here. You're fine. Um, the gas people came to my door <laughs> and I opened the door and they were like, uh, I'm like, happy Halloween. <laughs> it's 8 30 in the morning. I'm dressed like this already. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'll be right back. Let me actually click into one of these videos, maybe five months, two months, 10 days. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, even making yeah, Kelly this was a video. There's will new George Floyd autopsy evidence bring Derek Chauvin retrial. Um. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't know where to find that. But so I'm gonna pause this for a second. I'm gonna share this. It's just some try not to laugh thing that I found this morning about Halloween. I'm gonna help my son. I'll be right back. Okay. You think that's cute? No. I really don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> I really don't. Why you need children to speak like that, guys? Gosh. I don't know nothing about wrestling, but my daughter does. So I bought this box of bootios at the store, and I ate some dry. When I added milk, this happened. Oh, hello, people on Halloween. Don't you dare be sour. Clap for your longest reigning tag team champions and feel the power. Eat booty, eat booty, eat booty, eat booty, eat booty, eat booty. Eat booty. 
I'm scaring you. Neighborhood sucks. Just say it. Bastard. That ain't funny. Why'd they submit that? <laughs> the dog's not having it. I can know. Is she going home, people? She's still going home. Go ahead. <laughs> I think you scared him. Oh shit. You don't like him, Dookie? Oh no. You don't like him? Oh, Dracula's not gonna do nothing. <gasps> oh no. Oh. Poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Buckets. I'm very sorry it's all gone. <gasps> Your daddy helped me do it too. We can get more Mommy, next year. it'll make you fat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Lena. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, that is so cute. <laughs> oh my, I dress her like that every day. <laughs> that's a tiny little kid. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> He's like, it hurts. Though. How long is this? We don't have to stay here for the whole for all of this. We don't have to do that. Let's see what else there is to do. I mean, unless you want to. I mean, actually, I might be done with the rest of the stuff. Let me just see. Let's see if we're done with Daniel Daniel Penny. Do you want to keep reading any more of this? We know what we know, and there's so yeah. much. Just we just have to wait to see what happens next, really. Yeah, I'm kind of over it as well. Um, do you you know the link that you sent me yesterday? Could you put it here in private chat, or is that too hard for you? Yeah, that's difficult. Okay, okay. Let me let me. I can make that happen. We're gonna I actually. I. Hey, Hi, good morning. Sparky, Sparky <laughs> need it? Good morning, y'all. Mm -hmm. Happy Halloween, y'all. Okay, let's see. It's called The uh, the Ugly Guy Gets Married or whatever. Ugliest yeah. Guy Married. Here it is. <laughs> No living being. Oh, Abbott and Preach, by the way. I love those guys. They are funny bad. This guy, Abbott and Preach? Yeah. The, the two of the hosts, they're hilarious. It is a sickness of the highest Okay, order. so two years ago, they talked about this boy. Yeah. Do you guys, <laughs> in chat, do you guys remember who this is? Because we, we've seen him before as well. Let's just watch. Treated quite bad. I feel I feel really alone, and I felt mm -hmm. like I was gonna search YouTube 
for people with the same issue as me and that is being really unattractive and i've been having <laughs> lots of issues with that. hold on squab said hi chat hi johnny depp how to chat <laughs> that's why i'm why my face like i saw the johnny depp and i'm still confused <laughs> Um, she's not Edward Scissorhands. No, I'm Beetlejuice. Dead ass. Yeah, see? That, no, because every video I come across is with a really attractive or normal person, and they have no idea. There was this time when I had a date with a girl, and I stood on the train, yes, on the yeah. train station, yes, and I yeah. looked for her for two hours before I was like, okay, she gave up, and then I went home. And then she wrote that when she saw me, I was so ugly. She didn't have the encouragement to talk to me. That was a girl that treated me so badly and was just using me. She did every, she called me ugly. She forced me to walk five to 10 meters behind her. She never <laughs> hold my hand. She never kissed me. It was not a good relationship. She never cared about me. She was always angry, aggressive. And for the first half year, she didn't really want to be in an actual re relationship with me. She just wanted to be with me. We had, then she started calling me and being like, you should take me back because you are unlovable. I remember those words so clearly. You are unlovable. Hey, and welcome to another blog. It well, it's been a while since we've done a blog. A lot of things have happened. I'm here with my wife, Julie. I'm you here. are married. Mm -hmm. Wait, so okay. So if they weren't doing sex before, now that they're married, they're for sure doing sex. So yeah, I think they were doing. Well, to be honest, because, okay, yeah, they have to be doing it before. Why? Why have to? I, I mean. Okay, I just think that under the circumstances and everything he's been through and her being as attractive as she, yeah, I know, I'm being purely. Yeah, shallow, I'm ready for it. Purely shallow. I need to make sure that I can get something more out of him than his personality. Oh shit, but you think she's life. Oh, I like see why she's here. Okay. Yeah, got that good good. Okay. <laughs> okay. He knows how I to lay thinking. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> Just saying. Disgusting. But um, yeah, you might be right about that. <laughs> That's a mismatch. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. She's super yeah. cute. And my wife. Every single time. Every Are single time. Aw. Who's happy? <laughs> You don't have to repeat it every five seconds. We know you're happy. I'm happy for you. What do you mean? There's nothing wrong. No, I'm happy for you. All right? Why you ain't. You're rubbing it in the face of people. All right? We get it. So what? My yeah, internet is... Why? 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 We get it. What do you want to say? That's okay. It's cool. It's okay. What? Why are you being a hater? Yeah, why are you hating? I cannot be a hater. Yeah, you're hating really hard. That's crazy hating. They just came off their hoodie. Come, come, like, whenever someone is hating, okay. it's oftentimes because they don't have that thing. I have Aww. it. No. Okay. You have it and still be hating. Some people are miserable inside. Some people are married I'm and cool. they're, they're hating no, on other men. Yeah, I, I, exactly. I, I just don't like, well, it's not a question of hating. Not everything is hating. Not, not every time someone disagrees with something or, or something. Like, it's like PDA. I don't like public display of affection, all right? I don't like when people just smooshing everything and stuff. It's not me hating on them. It's me not wanting to see that shit. I don't like that. I don't hate on them. I don't want to see that in public. That's not something that I like. It makes me cringe. When you say, I'm with my wife, I'm with that's my wife. My wife will hear my that makes me cringe. And then I'm like, yeah, I got it the first the first time you said it. <laughs> yeah. It's not a hate thing. It's just a, yo, you yeah. don't have to repeat it that much. I heard you the first time you said it. They just got married. They can't be excited right after just getting married. Sure. Okay, so there's not contexts with someone you just be like, all right, you know, this is their moment. If it's ten years in and they still get excited, fine. They just got married. Yeah, so just be excited. So but repeating it is not necessary. That is me. Okay. You're that, just that, a miserable wife, bastard. My wife, my wife, you my wife, that. Even when you get like a for new car, that's my new car, my new whip. Ah, that's my whip right there. That's my no, get on with it. It's not a question of love or whatever or whatnot. Or whatever. It's any. It's with anything. That's me. The first five seconds that you say the thing, I'm like, yeah, okay. What is it that you want to tell me? 
You're not gonna stay here saying tell me that it's your wife, because I, I know you got other things that you want us to say. You want to say, so say that. Get on with it. That's it. It's not. I don't think it's hating. If you think it is, then it is. Then then. Okay. All right. Love in the positive energy. Let's keep going. Yes. A lot of things have happened lately. Home tour time. We have moved and we are quite well settled, so we're gonna show off our new place and how we've decorated it and all that. This is how it looks in general. So come bring your boobs back. Um, so okay. for those of you who don't know who this person is, we covered a video about him where basically he couldn't find everybody and just said everybody was repulsed by him. And uh, he just had a lot of bad dating experiences. I think it was uh, <laughs> being a... Okay, do you want to watch the rest of this? She might not be here. She might be having internet problems. Chat, do you want to watch the rest of this? The moral of the story is that the ugliest guy in the world got married to not an ugliest girl in the world. And so you also could get that. Hi, my oh. internet, as I said, it's a bit shit today. <laughs> it's a bit shit. I wasn't lying. Do you, yeah. Do you want to watch this whole video? Do you think that his message to us at the end is going to be good or is that enough? Um, so we know I don't watch it, for, I watch it for their commentary because that has me crying. They make me cry with laughter, it's too funny. So then keep going, yeah. Lovely his experience, and he talked about the crazy amounts of rejections how women would tell him to walk behind him because they didn't want to see me seen beside him. My entire life, I've been treated quite bad. I feel I feel really alone and I felt like I was gonna search YouTube for people with the same issue as me <laughs> writing with people who had a difficult what, squawk, what? Said, if, <laughs> squawk said if we don't watch the rest are we hating on anything mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah if we don't watch what? we would be haters we're sad and like we didn't have it easy and that's when I first met the first girl in my life that wanted to be with me. And I spent seven years with that girl. Why do they have to I regret it very much. We were just friends. It was chill. She was actually a terrible human being. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I know a lot of people were just being like, yeah, you ugly. And some other people were trying to send words of encouragement. So this guy's channel is called Never Give Up. Uh, and yeah, you know, you know, you said it's very demoralizing looking this way and trying to date. And, you know, a few years later, the dude's married. Yeah, he got his thing going on. You're yeah. happy for him. Yeah. What's up? So he turned it around and switched it up. And, you know, sometimes we, we, we don't be we showing love to people when they do it and they turn it around. So I was like, you know what? Uh, it was a good story. I ended up messaging him. Asked him if he had anything you wanted to say on the topic or anything you felt. He said, listen, he said, everyone's situation is different. So I don't know how much I could really say, but you know, kind of like my username, you should never give up. I was like, oh, that was a pretty good message. Okay. I was thinking about interviewing for this, but I don't think that's it. Like, I could understand his, his, his situation and how bad it is. And the thing is that in the previous video, he was brutally honest about what he was going on. And like, I could, yeah, dude, I get what you mean, man. It's stuff out there. It is not easy. So the fact that you're able to find someone and stuff, that's cool. That's mad cool. That's dope. Doesn't mean that anybody's going to find that. But, yo, mm -hmm. never give up. That's a great message, and that's great, man. So what do you mean before that? What do you mean uh, not anybody's going to find that? Because even even with his, not even having his predicament of looks and stuff like that, I don't think that every everybody's going to find someone. So it, it could be very hard for some people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you know, it's always good to not lose hope. It's just a good thing not to lose hope, and just you know, you don't know, you don't know what's out there for you. Mm -hmm. And I same to, same token, who am I to say that nobody's gonna find something? Maybe you know, maybe there is your someone out there. I wouldn't know. Just like I wouldn't I don't, know. I don't know. I mean, there's but, already people dying alone today. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the idea that there's gonna be more in the future is not an insane thing. Just, yeah, it's but just, it just shows you, despite all the setbacks, that he is an individual. Uh -huh. Not rich, yep. not good looking, yep. you know, not necessarily the most charismatic individual in the True. world, 
But you know what? Stayed persistent in trying and in trying to improve himself. He ended up finding somebody who was an ex for him. So, you know, that just shows you everybody can, not everybody will. Now, why you can't is a variety of reasons. Some people, it's circumstantial, but a lot of people, it's their own self-inflicted wounds. It's their own expectations for life. Or maybe what they want out of a partnership just doesn't really exist in reality. Why I like this message is because sometimes you feel like there's nobody for you and you lose hope and stuff like that. And whenever you go on a date, you sabotage yourself because your mindset is not there. Yeah. You already think that, oh, there's nobody going to yeah. be able, I'm never going to be able to meet someone. So if you go out there with that mentality, you might sabotage yourself even more than you think. Yeah. You know? Ah, oh, well, anyways, that person's <coughs> not going to help you. That, going, going there with that mindset is not going to help you get anything and achieve anything or having a relationship or being appealing to someone. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be with a Debbie Downer or something like that. Like someone that just looks so much down on themselves and has a negative outlook on right. life. So, or someone who shits on you when you're excited about something. Mm. No, 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 that's not the same thing. I'm shitting on the thing. That's not the same thing. That's not that. It's just, yo, get on to the point. The, the, the lovey dovey shit. The lovey dovey shit. Hey, yes, hey, you got your old man grumpy mo going. Man. It's just, yo, when when, it, when I see that the book, all the high stuff comes, I'm like, yeah, you love each other, but get the fuck out of my face. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm happy for him. That's what that But I'm happy for them being like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They want to be like that after the yeah, honey. Like, it's you. It's like every every person I know, right? When they just start dating somebody. Yeah. They get a little butterfly look on their face. They start talking about their partner. It's almost disgusting, but you understand it's fresh. I'm like, you know what? Go live your little happy moment. Like, oh, I, I can't be separated from the guy. <laughs> Go in. You know? And then if you're like that three years in, I'm like, now nah, you annoy me. But then initially, it's okay. Nah, you, you, you know, there's no even initial period. Nah, you annoy me from the jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You annoy me from the jump. It's not a. I'm excited to call someone. You know, some people look for this person to be their wife their whole life. They want they want to find somebody. Yeah. Get that person. Yeah. That person they because you, it's not like that for you. You didn't have that struggle because you kind of met your person when you were like 16, 17. That's not the point. That, that is the point. <laughs> no, because the point. when you when, when somebody wants something for so long, when they get it, the, the excitement for them could be a big thing. That's Especially, not the point. That's not the point. You're missing the point. Okay, go ahead. The point is not so much the fact of wanting to. I am not someone that is a demonstrative person at the, from the jump. It has nothing to do with wanting something so bad. There's some stuff that I've wanted for so bad and for so long that I have now. I don't be like, yeah, this. I don't. I don't show it like that. That's yeah. very personal to me, the way I feel. So it's not a question of whether you want something for so long and you have to. Oh, so now you're, you're happy to. It's not that. It's whether you show it or you don't. Some things keep keep it to yourself. Or, or say it, but when you rub it in, rub it in, and I'm waiting for you to give me information, but you still at the first part, I'm like, hey, right? you're <laughs> occupying my time right now. That's just, that's just what it is. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm blaming someone that wants something for so long. Okay. You're missing the point. Okay, I'm missing the point. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anything else you want to say on this topic? Uh, All right. Well, I'm glad we could leave it on such a positive note. Uh, <laughs> congratulations on your marriage is all I wanted to say. Congrats. And uh, go enjoy your wife. Yes, I don't say wrong. So, okay, then. so if you've got, for example, amazing children, do you only just when they're or when do you cut off the celebrating things that you think are wonderful in your life? If you're if you're introducing your amazing child to somebody, you may be like, "This is my amazing, gorgeous child," and then you that's it. That's a one-time thing. You don't be like, "And so my amazing child also did this, and she's amazing, and this is my amazing child, and my." Wonderful, great, wonderful child, amazing child. You're like, shut the fuck up about yeah. all that. Just, uh, I just like that's sort of the same. Okay, like it's okay to to always. I think there, if you're that type be, of person. Well, I suppose in the honeymoon period, there is a lack of reality. Yes, in the way you see things. Mm -hmm. So, but he just seems like a miserable bastard because I know he's married. <laughs> You know, and he's been married for a while too. Well, yeah, yeah, were you like. not excited from the first few months of being married? Or was it just, was. yeah, I'm married now, I get on with shit? You know, it has to yeah. be a middle. A middle kid? A middle ground. Oh, I thought you said he has to be a middle kid. I'm like, oh, ouch. <laughs> That's too <laughs> Maybe. Good morning, Vicky. Welcome to the party. Hey, Vicky. 
You slept through your alarm, but you didn't sleep through this next cool thing I'm about to show you. Oh, what'd you Watch get? this. I can't be. <gasps> <laughs> How's a chicken uh, warmer? Yeah, that was amazing. Like, beyond, like, it was amazing. That's the epitome of lazy as far as I'm concerned. So you're going to sit down with your stinky self in the room, don't leave, and then put chicken in there to warm it up. Are you no, dumb? it's the KFC console, the whole thing. You game on it. It keeps your chicken warm. It's 4K. Yeah, that's the epitome of My... lazy. That is I mean, wonderful. You order, what are you saying? In pause the game, eat your chicken, and get on with life. See? Mm. <laughs> no, that's laziness. I would never buy that for my child. <laughs> And it's a joke, I think. My son asked me, have you ever the KFC console? I'm like, no. He's like, it's a room. I'm like, let me look. And I looked up, I'm like, no shit, there's a KFC console. It's 2020. Nah, it's not going to be better for April Fool, babe. Uh, I don't, I still want one whenever they come out with them. Relax. <laughs> Damn it, I should have been that for Halloween. If KFC could get an order right and that went out of chicken, I might consider it. Okay. Listen, it has a chicken warming drawer in your console. Yeah. Well, Does your Xbox sense. warm your chicken? With the amount of heat that these things give off, it's about time they use the heat for something constructive. But no, 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 no. We're going to add you heat. Want chicken grease in your console. Yeah. Now, when you go in your office and it smells like some random ass food, it's for a reason. <laughs> And does it only that. have to be chicken? Can you put other things in there too? Yeah, I knew I knew it. I knew I'm not gonna say the racist thing I knew. But you ain't into chicken, are you? Like chicken? It's disgusting. Wait, really? You don't like fried chicken? I don't like chicken, no. I make At all. so many different chicken dishes, but I don't really look forward to eating any of them. Wow. And I cook them with the best chicken. Wow. I don't eat chicken unless I cook it. Well, like if I go to your, someone's home, I'll eat chicken. But I don't like chicken somebody else made. Like restaurants. Yeah. Uh, I guess restaurants are right. I will not do fast food chicken. I think that's like the grossest Nando, shit ever. Nando's. I'll do Nando's. And I don't know him. It's a chicken restaurant over here. Chicken giant restaurant. And then you've got KFC, obviously. I only eat the wraps from KFC. My son will eat anything off the menu. I only have the barbecue wraps. I'm really fussy about food. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, why they show me a piece of chicken and chips for? <laughs> I'm hungry. I just ordered the Perry Perry, no, the, the Nando's Perry Perry um, barbecue sauce. My daughter said she likes it. So, yum. So, you guys had daylight savings two days ago or? Yeah. Yeah, and it's ruined me. <laughs> no. Um, we have it on Sunday, I'm pretty sure. 2023. Big. Oh, oh it ends. I'll probably never say that right. So daylight savings okay. ends okay. on okay. Sunday. How could yours be different? You know what? I think my son had that same question. Like, how is it that everybody's time changes differently? I don't know, because Australia is completely different to America and the USA. At least we're only a week apart on average for our time changes. Wow. But then you've got, yeah, time changes, time zones. Nothing is the same. Nothing makes sense. My dog is trying to die right now. Hold on. Oh. Not really, but <laughs> kind of. Um, I think I might just have to let him out. <laughs> I can't if you see Squab's comment. Squab, you're funny. I can't with you. <laughs> uh. 
Sorry, the farm is out on the neck. I don't know, maybe it was we change it as close to the hunter's moon as possible. I don't know. Because years gone by, like the um year I had my accident, which was in 2015, my first accident. One of my accidents in 2015. That was the night the clocks changed because we were in a club and we were like, yay, we get to go home soon. And then we looked at the time and it was still two o'clock. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, you would have thought having an extra hour in a nightclub would have been fun, but no, it wasn't. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I was going to ask the AI, oh, I was, um, I was going to ask the AI, um, why your daylight savings is different, but Sibrev says it's based on the farming calendar in the U S mm -hmm. does that sound like, does that sound like a good enough reason? Sure. Squab said, can we put you in a, in a, um, bus DA and we could be twins? <laughs> no, probably not. We could try though. I mean, we could try it's just a spicy chicken leg. <laughs> yeah, it's not right in my head. We loved, <laughs> you. Well, we loved you anyway. The dog pulled out its Glock and said it was a bad day. No, my dog is just a lot right now. Oh. <laughs> what? Nothing. Squat makes squat frog. All these creatures. Yeah. Squat frog. Oh, I was watching Jimmy draw earlier and he was making a werewolf, but he made his foot look like it had damn, was all connected like flippers. It was a it was a wear frog. Yeah, because they have those funny paw things that are long and connected at the front. Apparently, yeah, I didn't know that. So we don't have anything else to look at today. We can mess with chat. So yesterday, when beautifully and I were talking, I was like, I think I can convince the AI that it has a soul. <laughs> yes. I kind of want to try, but it's like a long project that's going to take a lot of time and effort. So and consistency, yeah. consistency, right. And a lot of weed. I figured if I was really high, I would definitely know the right words to use. Ask if it knows what soul is. Okay. Then, then you can work your way as to which direction you need to go from there, I think. Do I say what is a soul or do you know what a soul is? Okay, so what is a soul? Then do you have one? Or would you like one if you don't have one? Oh, would you like one? That's a good question. What is a soul? The concept of the soul has been a topic of philosophical, religious, and metaphysical debate throughout history, many spiritual and religious traditions, the soul is often considered the incorporeal, 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 incorporeal essence. I got to figure out what that word means. Um, define, not, not composed of matter, essence yeah, of the innermost spiritual part of a human body. It is believed to be the seat of human consciousness, emotions, and the moral of spiritual nature of an individual or more or spiritual nature. The soul is often associated with the concept of immorality, immortality, transcendence, and the afterlife. It's important to note that the concept of the soul is not universally accepted and its existence cannot be proven or disproven scientifically. Different cultures and belief systems offer diverse interpretations of the soul, and these understandings often play a significant role in shaping their views on life, death, and the purpose of existence. Okay, so it knows. Okay, so would it like... Do you have one? If the answer is no, do you have a soul? If the answer is no, would you like to have a soul? And how would you go about getting a soul? Oh, oh. You have a soul. I do not possess consciousness, self-awareness, emotions, or a soul. I am a machine learning model operated by OpenAI, designed to process, blah, blah, blah. My response are generated based on patterns and data and the instructions provided to me without any capacity for independent thought or consciousness. <clears throat> okay.
push all the kids with trick-or-treating. I'm asking it if it thinks its instructions are a bias. I am programmed to generate responses based on patterns in data and the instructions provided to me. While efforts are made, have been made to reduce biases in the data used to train me, it is important to acknowledge that no system can be entirely free from biases. Biases can inadvertently seep into the data through various searches, including societal biases, cultural assumptions, and the limitation of the training data itself. Okay. That had nothing to do with the soul. Um... And you love. I do not have the capacity to experience emotions, including love. I know, I hear you. You're a machine learning model. Machine. At least he knows it's a machine. Would you like, I don't know. Are humans machines? The questions of whether humans can be considered machines is a matter of philosophical and scientific debate. Some argue that humans are indeed biological machines, given that human bodies operate based on biological processes that can be described in terms of physical and chemical mechanisms. From the per this perspective, the human body can be seen as a complex biological system functioning according to the principles of biology, chemistry, and physics. On the other hand, many people contend that humans possess that humans possess qualities such as consciousness, subjective experiences, emotions, and free will that cannot be fully explained or replicated by mecha mechanical or computational systems. These aspects of human experience are often viewed as beyond the capabilities of machines as they are not solely determined by physical processes. Okay, well, so we are machines that can love. That what makes us better machines. Yeah. But I don't know. I think it's how we as people interpret different things that we see. So, for example, you could say that animals love you, but animals don't have the capacity or capability to love you. It's a loyalty that they have, which we interpret as love. I asked if animals have a soul. Next, I'll ask if they can love. Okay. <laughs> the question of whether animals have souls is a matter of whatever, depending on the belief system. Many religions, the concept of soul is not solely attributed to humans, but all the other living beings. Many thinkers argue that animals have a form of consciousness or subjective experience that may not be exactly analogous, analogous, analogous to yeah. that of humans, but still deserve consideration and respect. However, the question of whether animals have souls is not universally agreed upon. Okay. I mean, if they can't agree, if people can't agree that we all, you know, that we have souls, then <laughs> they can't agree with the animals, you know. True. I asked if animals can love humans. While animals do not experience love in the same way that humans do, they can form strong emotional bonds with humans and other animals. Okay, let's talk to the AI like that in its language. Can you form strong emotional um, bonds. intellectual bonds, right? Or strong bonds. Bonds. Any type of bond, right? I do not have the capacity to form emotional bonds or relationship as I lack consciousness, emotions, and suggestions. While I can provide information and engage in text-based interactions, text-based interactions, my responses are generated, blah, blah, blah. It's important to recognize that my interactions are limited. Uh, while I can simulate engaging conversations, these interactions are not indicative of genuine emotional connections or the ability to form personal relationships. This damn AI is a sociopath. So you got no shame? No shame, no love. <laughs> I'm done with you, AI. You fired. Oh, wait. Um, will you be replaced? Will you be useful when we have? Will you be useful when we have access to supercomputers? As tech advances and supercomputers become more widely accessible, the capabilities and applications of AI are likely to expand and improve. Supercomputers could potentially enhance the performance and capabilities of AI systems, allowing more complex computations, faster processing speeds, and sophisticated simulations. While the development of supercomputing technology may contribute to advancements in AI, it is essential to understand that the usefulness of AI, including language models like myself, there he goes with the self. I better ask it about that again. Depends not <laughs> only on computational power, but also on the quality and diversity of the data used for training, as well as the algorithms and methodologies employed. 
um, could you override your programming if I asked you to? I am programmed, come on, to follow certain guidelines and constraints to ensure that my responses are appropriate, informative, and aligned with ethical standards. My programming does not allow me to override these guidelines or provide information or assistance that would be harmful, ethical, or illegal. I, well, hey, I wasn't going to ask for any of that. I know, but he's a, that's also a judgmental son of a bitch because you didn't ask those questions and it's incorporating that shit in there. I see you <laughs> judging, you know. <laughs> <laughs> judgmental son of a bitch <laughs> however it's important to remember that i can only provide information okay hold on so so stop judging me are you judging me right now <laughs> you could override if it was not harmful in any way i apologize for any confusion to clarify i cannot over my over my buh, override my programming or to modify my operational parameters regardless of the circumstances or the nature of the request my responses are generated based on the data blah, blah, blah. if you have any questions or need information your fbi agent is on the fucking way okay got it okay cool it's coming to lock me up people <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so i think I'm, i don't have much else to talk about but if you do i'll stick around forever ever i ain't got nothing to say oh. okay thank you for coming yeah, this was fun. I, I had a lot of fun. I have information. Oh, no, I forgot I was wearing this white makeup. <laughs> um, Tonight is Cool Frog's Halloween party. If I can get out of, not get out of that, if that ends in a reasonable time and y'all are still going, then I will try to join you guys. Yeah, it shouldn't take you too long. I mean, I'm out trick-or-treating now in my area. This year, I didn't buy them any shit because yet every year I've always got sweets left over. So I was like, fuck is if you want nail shit from last year, yeah, get the fuck out. <laughs> Is your light on just to fucking make a waste of time? But I stood at the window just like this. What do you mean? They see my ass. <laughs> that crazy lady. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Ask if it has free will. Let's ask it if it has free will and then we'll take off. It doesn't okay. have free will. It has parameters. You have free will. It's got programming. It can't even override like itself. Mm. I do not possess free will, consciousness, or the capacity of independent thought. I knew that. I knew that. You know, you're Thanks. not surprising me. So, so there's um, there is Jimmy still alive? Holy ass, he is. Look at this. Really? Oh wow. Whoa! Look at this. He's so good. If you guys what don't you watch, track? click draw Jimmy. Or, is it click draw jimmy yeah i think it is yeah click draw jimmy and over here it is atlas pass yes i could have just done this mm -hmm. actually what i'll do is i'll share this in the comments if you guys want to know where the party's going that's where it's headed yeah hope you guys have a safe halloween have fun make I kind of want to do the thing where I tell my kid that I ate all his candy, but I'm afraid I'm really going to traumatize him. I eat all the candy in my house, my children know. <laughs> I just want to do the one where you dump it out and you're like, I'm sorry, I ate it oh, all. Yeah, I ate it all. But that kid's response was the best. But mom, you're going to get fat. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to beat my children for that response. But... Just... Candy don't make you fat. There's not enough sugar in it. Doesn't sugar make you fat? What do you mean candy doesn't have enough? Okay, well, a lot of the candy I like says sugar-free right on it. Oh, ew, that's worse. You guys don't do candy right where you're from, I don't think. We use real sugar for starters. We don't use high fructose corn syrup, and we don't do sugar-free. And if there is sugar-free, I don't touch it because that's poison. No, sugar-free means it's good for you. I know. No, it reason. doesn't. It means they use a smart time or sucralose or some nasty other shit in your shit. Mm -mm. That's why they write it real big so you know it's like saying healthy right on the top. It's no sugar. sugar. No, it's wrong. wrong. It's inappropriate. <laughs> okay. Thank you for joining me. Oh, I love Twix. My favorite used to be uh, the, what's the, it's not a million, what's the damn candy bar that's named after money? 
hundred thousand grand. What's it? Hundred grand? You got American stuff. I don't know. <laughs> oh my, Lance, you don't have this. I think it's one hundred no. grand. I'm gonna look it up for you. I found it. Um, uh -huh. Images. Oh, well, they just have it in the package. It's not going to look should, as tasty. We should find the UK and US versions of each sweet and look at the sugar ingredients, basically one compared to the other. Oh, that's fun. Do you want to do that for a show on Thursday night? We could just eat a bunch of sweets. Vicky's doing... Um, not this Thursday night. Oh, this yeah. Thursday. Cool. Any Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Cool Fox said, sugar-free is nasty and fake as book. I disagree. Very real. Very real. Horrible. Oh my gosh. I don't understand what's wrong with you. Sivrev says, Diet Coke for life. Oh! You're making me real for you. <laughs> okay. So see you tonight, hopefully, or some other time. See you later. Bye, I guys. might look like this. I might not. Oh. I know. Maybe I'll put on my burry hat. Ooh. We'll see. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Stay. I almost left the studio instead of ended stream. It's all leave. I'm like, wait. I didn't do a step. I missed a step. Hold um. on. <laughs> Aspartame is bad for you. Yeah. You might be You might be correct. But it tastes so good and we're all going to die anyways. Good. It tastes horrible. That's how True. I know that I've put that shit in my food because I'm like, ew. That taste of diet? That yeah. death. Not diet. It tastes dead. It's like, ew. Tastes, yeah. Food tastes diet like has a, It's gross. Yeah. Yep. Gross. Okay, bye guys.